Sportsbit is powered by Bet Online, driving the opening odds market since 2001. Visit sportsbookreview.com to learn more about Bet Online and its A plus rated platform in the link below. Big game breakdown continues. NFL playoff previews for Sunday. The Carolina Panthers travel to the Superdome in New Orleans, take on the Saints. Saints, let's call it minus seven and 48 and a half. You can still find some six and a halfs out there on New Orleans with juice. I don't know how much longer those are going to last. The money has come on the Saints. The money has come on the under. You look at the first two meetings between these two teams this year, pretty one-sided. Saints plus four and a half at Carolina. They won by three touchdowns. They were minus six at home. They won by double digits there as well. Combined yardage, about 200 yards better for New Orleans in total offense. And it's worth noting, Saints had the number one and the number two scoring games. The number one and the number six yardage allowed games by the Carolina Panthers this defense, uh, against Carolina Panthers defense this season. Panthers did not match up particularly well stopping New Orleans. It is worth noting there was no Greg Olson for either game for the Panthers, but I mean, the Panthers, uh, well, we'll talk about their passing game in just a minute. So what do we do in a divisional rematch where one team swept the other team in the postseason or in the regular season? What do we do in the postseason? Well, the numbers from pro football reference. The Panthers and the Saints will be the 22nd matchup since 1970 to occur three times in a season where one team swept the first two regular season meetings. In the first 21, the team that swept the first two regular season meetings won the playoff game 14 times, including the two most recent occurrences. So to say it's really hard to beat a good team three times, that's a lie. It's proven false. <laughs> and when you have a team's number, sometimes you have a team's number. Now, winning by margin is another question entirely. But winning the game? Hey, Saints are chalk here for a reason. And, of course, you look at the season-long numbers, New Orleans defense, huge strides from where they were. 2016, number 29 overall, number 23 against the rush, number 30 against the pass. This season, they went from 29th to 6th in passing uh, against, pa- uh, against the pass. They went from 30th to 5th football outsiders ratings. But those season-long numbers may be lying right now. Over the last couple of weeks, really just down the stretch, they lost the defensive end, Alex Okafor, the linebacker, A.J. Klein, the safety, Kenny Vaccaro, all to injured reserve. None of them are coming back. That's key guys on all three units for their defense. Last week, must-win game against Tampa. They're playing for something. The Bucs gained 455 yards. They converted 12 of 14 third down plays. And the Saints lost the game. That's a concern. I think the Saints' full-season defensive numbers aren't telling the true story where that defense is right now. But, of course, their offense was transformed this season. I mean, Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara, between them, more than 3,100 yards from scrimmage from the running back position. Both adept runners, both excellent pass catchers. And they allowed, the presence of those two guys allowed Drew Brees to set the all-time, all-time NFL completion percentage mark. 72% of his passes were complete. He also had only 1.5% of his dropbacks and interceptions and only 3.6 and in sacks. And this is a team that played down in distance really well all season. Low risk plays, short third down conversion, 13 of 16 games. They had one turnover or zero. They were number three in yards per drive, number two in points per drive. This isn't a chuck it around, up-tempo, crazy Saints football. This is time-consuming drives moving the football, grinding it out, (laughs) Uh, you know, moving the chains. That's what the Saints have been doing. Of course, you know, the Carolina defense, it's a solid young secondary. They really weren't necessarily ready last year. This year, they matured pretty well, and I've been impressed with that defense. Offensively, for Carolina, their issues. You know, they really hoped that Christian McCaffrey would be the final piece of the puzzle on offense, but then the wide receiver situation fell apart. They traded Kelvin Benjamin, and they lost Curtis Samuel and Demary Bird to IR. What'd they do? Carolina, over the season, they made Cam Newton a running back again. Now look at the numbers. Last year, only 90 carries, 359 yards. This year, more than twice as many yards. 
and nearly 140 carries. But Cam Newton's coming off the worst passer rating of his career last week at Atlanta. He opened the game 0 for 9. He threw three interceptions. And Cam Newton understands the situation right now with the Panthers receiving or record, receiving core that is pretty well depleted. Quote, we just have to understand that a game like this and games moving forward, guys aren't just going to be free. As a whole, from throwing the ball and catching the ball, we have to make contested catches and maximize on good opportunities that we do get. It's all about contested catches and physicality. In theory, that sounds great. Whether the Panthers receiving core is actually capable of doing that, I'll put it this way. I wouldn't bet on it to be Saints or under for this better in this matchup. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.